very good morning all of you and it's always a great pleasure to be here at Ahmedabad in a beautiful city with amongst my lovely friends and I would just like to extend my gratitude to Dr. Banshee Sabu sir and the entire team of Dye Care Bond who always try to who is a real enthusiastic team you know and um, you know I always uh, look forward for these uh, beautiful topics and what sir has given me today is like on MNT. So we all know that India is a carbocolic country and and with all the studies with the, uh, uh, you know, with the STAR study, the INDAC study, which has shown that India is taking almost 65 to 70% of us are taking carbs in our plate. And, and as we know that, you know, uh, we have the typical plate over here, but still the what India eats is as per the studies, the urban and the rural India does not meet the protein requirement, unfortunately, and that is why here, uh, you know, we are always fo forcing, you know, or focusing on protein. And even as and we, uh, we see the Eat Lancet Commission report, which also says that India also consumes fewer complex carbohydrates, proteins, and uh, uh, vegetables, and that is why I think when India, being a carbohydrate country, is where we are facing the problems of obesity. Now, when talking about MNT, and that is why MNT plays a very, very important role. Uh, now, when we talk about the, uh, you know, about decades back, I'm sure you're going to agree. All the dietitians are sitting here. They, they, they uh, I think decades back, 20 to 30 years back, you know, we used to have a printed, a typical printed diet charts even we had in our clinic because that time when we used to sit for so much time and we didn't have so many dietitians also so we used to have you know 1200 typically made you know 1200 1600 1800 uh, calorie diet charts made and you know that were being then distributed by uh, physicians or by our doctors uh, to the uh, uh, to our people with diabetes but but yes now is the time when yes we need to focus on medical nutrition therapy basically it is a therapeutic approach to treat the medical conditions and the main objective here is so that you know uh, it is, uh, the PWDs can um, uh, can manage uh, uh, they can manage their blood glucose control uh, blood uh, glucose and also at the same time have a good glycemic profile good HDL control and overall have a healthy metabolic, uh, um, good metabolic health. So uh, this MNT also focuses on the traditional, uh, traditionally food because again, the India, India eats different foods and different, you know, north, south, east, west, there are different foods. So that is why we have to focus on the traditional foods also. And one limit, a limitation what MNT had and that what we had before that it is like we must know that it is not one size fits all it has to be highly individualized as per the metabolic needs as per their traditional uh, religion as well so the, again this is very very important and hence we need more on more of research now uh, when we talk about india as a, a country there are different dietary habits and there uh, and all this is important because we have MNT in India. It actually focuses on moderating high glycemic index uh, carbohydrates and increasing the fiber intake. So that is what we all have to focus here. And there are number of guidelines which we are now following. Initially, I think way back 20 years back, we had only one or two guidelines. But now we have ABA, we have uh, RSSDI, we have R uh, ICMR guidelines to follow. Different uh, guidelines which we keep on keeping, and uh, then uh, along with that, India also is a hub of different uh, misconceptions. There are number of misbeliefs, uh, you know, whether we have fruits or not. And it's not only fruits; it's from the vegetables to the uh, to the cereals, to the proteins, to the fats. There is number of misconceptions, and there's also lack of uh, awareness, and that is. That is why there is a need for MNT. Now we should have it should it should be a stepwise approach. So it MNT it is 
not just giving away a diet chart, but it is like you need to come. Uh, and I'm very sure that whenever a, a you know a, a, a person with diabetes comes to you, I think we as a dietitian takes almost an hour or maybe sometimes even more to counsel them and to teach them about the diet. So we are is like our work starts first. We start uh, uh, with the workups. We try to assess what they are taking the 24-hour diet. They recall. We also, uh, uh, you know, try to uh, also try to see what are their food preferences, their cultural uh, inclination, and their uh, individual attitudes, their wishes, whether they are going to eat that or not. Then, then we try to diagnose their uh, their metabolic and non-metabolic conditions, and then we then we initiate the medical nutrition therapy and of course follow up is again is very very important because without follow up we do not know how much adherence to the diet is being done by the patients so when we are talking about there about MNT there is way beyond there is a lot of change which we have been seeing since last decades there is metabolic balance which we have to see we have to see the macronutrient distribution which I think we, as in when we have learned in the college, we had not learned so much. But now we are also trying to learn about how to uh, uh, how to divide the macronutrients uh, like the carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. We also focus on uh, uh, trying to add low glycemic index foods, adding uh, high fiber, so that at the end the result is that we get a better HbA1c and a better weight management. So the shift is from from one size fits all to personalized nutrition strategies, which uh, which is important, and this shifting paradigm in nutrition is is really important because initially first it was uh, uh, it was not individualized, but now it is uh, individualized as per as per the assessment as per the therapy goals. Uh, this is a very busy slide, but I just want to uh, you know take up one or two things that first. It was that ideal body weight is the goal, but now the research has shown that even a very small amount of weight loss, uh, uh, you know, will give you some good long long term benefits. And these are the recommendations which we have been following from the RSSDI, ADA, and ICMR uh, guidelines. I'm not going through all these because we all know I've been reading. Uh, all, all the time. Yes, on micronutrients. We never used to focus much on the micro, micronutrients. But yes, friends, I think now we have been always seeing the, uh, you know, especially the vegan diet if we are taking, you know, uh, if they have a B12 deficiency or if they are anemic, then yes, we also focus on these micronutrients and make sure that uh, we are, uh, you know, they are being provided in the diet chart uh, in an appropriate manner. So, uh, when we talk about MNT, it is highly individualized, and I think that is the main key for personal strategy. And these are the different varieties of, uh, you know, the diets, different varieties of diets. Because um, as like you know, as we are moving ahead, these are the different diets we can see that you can manipulate the macronutrient, you can even manipulate the time. Uh, the intermittent fasting is uh, is something which is being followed by many people then. There's also restriction of specific food, maybe uh, like your gluten-free diet or uh, even your vegan diet. So these are the different diets which are being used for the weight loss. But the main factor of success is adherence. Adherence to any sort of diet is very, very important. And these are the different types of diets which have been followed. I'm not going to go into all of them in detail. But I just want to tell you that a fat diet is a weight loss program or an aid that promises a dramatic results everything in a click people just want to reduce their weight in a click but let me tell you that all uh, there are uh, uh, all these diets have shown uh, first of all all these diets are first of all on for a very short period on a very small uh, people it is being done and it has been shown that in human, these short-term trials have shown modest reductions in body weight and improved cardiometabolic health in people who are overweight or obese. So I think we need to have more uh, number of studies because all these studies are maybe for some weeks, weeks or uh, for a very, uh, very short duration. So that is why long-term 
uh, duration trials are being looked at. Now, when you're talking all about the type 1, type 2 obesity, uh, even GDM we have seen there is a way difference what used to happen before, but now uh, uh, we, uh, we focus on, uh, on energy dense food, not only in the first trimester, but also in the second and the third trimester. These are the uh, recommendations which are being done. And we also focus on lactation the, uh, from 0 to 6 months and 7 to 12 months. So this is, these are the little things which have been adding in the MNT when we have to uh, tell them to consume uh, low glycemic index and low gly glycemic low foods. And with all that, splitting of breakfast is another new concept which is, uh, which is, which we, uh, we have been going, which we have been learning because it is glucose sensitivity in uh, is low in the morning and high insulin resistance which uh, that is why we need to split the breakfast we cannot load uh, the, the, the GDM woman with carbs in the morning as it is all our breakfast is loaded with carbs so yes we need to start slowly with the protein on a fiber and then uh, uh, then maybe and then maybe after two hours or three hours we can add a protein and then evening again uh, uh, we can add some protein or a fiber in it this is another concept uh, which is uh, which we have been learning that this is the order of the meal and uh, yes so the protein and the fiber first so uh, this again is important because uh, again this has shown that after having a protein and a fiber first the glycemic uh, it helps to reduce the blood glucose values and this is one of the studies which we have uh, we have uh, presented in at IPF assessing the impact of the change in the food order on time and range and time above range using ambulatory glucose profile and what we concluded is that the change in the sequential of macronutrient protein and carbohydrate uh, ingestion during a meal had a significant impact on the glycemic profile so simply changing the order can also be beneficial in uh, it had a significant uh, increase in timing range and decrease in time cover range. Then we have the meal replacers. So, uh, so you know, our people with diabetes are much happy when they come to us because we are not going to restrict them. Initially, what I remember 20 years before when I used to, uh, you know, when we had started our practice, uh, the, the patients never wanted to come to the dietitians because uh, both of us who like they ki ye sab nahi khana hai. You know, but now I am very happy that they always come and meet us and they always, you know, try to say ki what else we can take. Okay, so that is why the food exchange list, the meal replacers, we do not try to, uh, uh, you know, cut down their calories, but we try to manipulate with the macronutrients and give them something healthy to eat. And even the ICMR in diet study has also shown that the protein uh, that increase a simply increase in the protein and the reduction in carbohydrates can uh, will uh, can is important for diabetes remission. And this is again a small study or a CGM study uh, which has shown that the impact of consuming plant-based high protein and high fiber diets has a good effect on the blood glucose and the glycemic variability. So this was a, a simple. It's an ongoing study. In fact, in our uh, center and from the day 1 to day 7 they had a regular meal and from day 8 to day 14 they had a test meal which had which was a plant based high protein diet which was made with peanut flour, moong dal, urad dal, uh, bengal sam, sar and a little millet and what we can see what we uh, uh, saw we could see that the, uh, the average blood glucose uh, for the first 7 days and the second 7 days were had had a bit of reduction uh, around 30 percent of reduction. so here again we can see that when we are uh, uh, you know adding more of fiber and uh, protein in the meal it can help them to reduce the blood glucose again carb counting is very very important for the type ones uh, we all know and these are the simple uh, carbs you know which which can really help our people with diabetes especially the type ones the measuring scale, the cups, the spoons, the food label reading, which was never there decades before. So now we are, we, uh, everyone, we always try to emphasize them to read food labels. There are a number of carb counting books. There, uh, there are hand methods. 
uh, four tables which can be read then they, with we had a beautiful session on insulin pump and these are there are different number of technologies which can be used for carb counting initially carb counting used to be a very um, you know a very difficult uh, thing but now with the use of the technology with the use of ai people are able to you know count the amount of the carbs which they are eating so with just with you know taking the snap putting it okay uh, you know people can come to know they can uh, understand with the cgm they can also understand with the portion control so with the use of technology ai i, uh, I think mnt has taken a twist and turn and finally it is the only 7a of mnt that is i think mnt should be accessible acceptable accurate absorbable affordable attractive and appropriate so if all this is there in the diet i'm sure i'm sure everybody would be uh, uh, you know they would be really following and everybody would try to follow the diet plan what a dietitian gives with that thank you thank you so much